Hello students. So today in this video, we'll be learning how to draw molecular orbital diagrams, and I'll also uh, uh, teach you a shortcut trick uh, by which you can solve any questions from molecular orbital theory in less than a minute. Okay. Now see, uh, first of all, this thing molecular orbital means uh, this thing uh, when a molecule is formed, na, the atomic orbitals they combine to give us a set of new pair of orbitals. Okay. Say you have uh, two atomic orbitals. Like this, and they will combine to give you a molecular orbital. Okay. Now, this molecular orbital diagram it can be drawn in two ways. One is for total number of electrons less than or equal to fourteen, and other one is for total number of electrons greater than fourteen. Okay. So, in the first category, you see we have molecules such as P two, C two, N two, this type of molecules. Okay. Because you see, in nitrogen, we have total number of electrons equals to fourteen. Each nitrogen has seven electrons, so two nitrogens has fourteen electrons. Electrons and uh, if total number of electrons is uh, greater than fourteen, say oxygen and fluorine molecules, then we'll use this diagram. So uh, how we draw it? You see, we just write the electronic. I mean, uh, you can write all the orbitals, or you can just write the valence shell orbitals. Okay, here we have just considered the two s and two p orbitals for nitrogen. You see, the electronic configuration is one s two, two s two, and two p three. Okay, so the molecular orbital diagram it is drawn in this way. In both sides, we'll just uh, put the atomic orbitals, and each atomic orbitals they will combine to give us a new set of molecular orbitals. Okay, now see when two atomic orbitals combine, now you see this one two s from one nitrogen and two s from another nitrogen, they are combining to give us a set of New orbitals. Okay. Now, out of this set of new orbitals that are formed, na one will be a low energy orbital that is called your bonding molecular orbital, and another one will be your high energy orbital that will be called your anti bonding molecular orbital. Okay. And one more thing you have to remember that total number of molecular orbitals that are formed is equal to the total number of atomic orbitals that are combining. Okay. Now uh, in this uh, two diagrams, you see only one. Uh, this one changes there. In uh, the first one, for total number of electrons less than or equal to fourteen, we have this type of configuration. Means uh, this type of arrangement is uh, present, where uh, we'll get two, one, two, one in the two p set of orbitals. Okay, in the two p set of orbitals, we'll get two, one, two, one. Okay, but for Total number of electrons greater than fourteen. We have the arrangement one, two, two, one. You see, only this part is changing. Only this part is changing. Rest, the means all the arrangement is same. In uh, for uh, in this uh, say we are doing it for nitrogen molecule and this one is for oxygen molecule. Okay, so in nitrogen we have the configuration one s two, two s two, two p three. So we'll just fill up the electrons in the atomic orbitals. In two s we have two electrons. And in 2p we have three electrons. Okay, now we'll start filling up these electrons in this molecular orbitals in order of energy. Okay, so we'll start from the lowest energy uh, orbital. Now in this, let us come to this 2s. Now see in this 2s we have two electrons, and in this 2s also we have two electrons. Means both the uh, nitrogen atoms they have two two electrons in the 2s orbital. Means we have four electrons which we have to fill up in this two molecular orbitals. So we'll just fill up like this. We'll give. Uh, Two electrons to each, and we will get this type of arrangement. Okay. Now, when we come to two p, we have six electrons. Okay, and with these six electrons, we have to fill up in this orbitals. Now you see this one, this uh, pi two p x and pi two p y. These two orbitals are degenerate. Okay. Now if these orbitals uh, are degenerate, degenerate means uh, they have same energy. Okay. Now since these uh, orbitals are degenerate, we'll give one one electron first to each of this orbital. So we'll just fill up like this. We will give one one electrons to each. Then, if we have more electrons, we'll give one electron more to both of these orbitals. Okay. So in this way, four electrons will be occupied by this pi two p x and uh, pi two p y orbitals, and we are uh, left with two more electrons. And those two will be going into this two p z orbital. Okay. Now, if we come to this oxygen molecule, we have one electron more. Compared to nitrogen atom, okay. So in this one, in 2p, we have four electrons, okay. So total, we have eight electrons in both this 2p orbitals. So this eight electrons will just fill up in same way just we did in this one. 
so we will give two electrons in this uh, pz orbital then one one electron each and if we have more left then again we will give one one electron each in this 2px and 2py orbitals now see after filling up this bonding atomic bonding molecular orbitals we are left with two more electrons because total we had eight electrons and here maximum electrons that can occupy is six okay so those two electrons will be going into the high energy orbital that is the anti-bonding molecular orbitals okay so since uh, these are degenerate so we will give one one electron each okay so uh, this is simple i think you all know this one say in this way just we draw the uh, molecular orbital diagram okay now after drawing this molecular orbital diagram what we can do we can write electronic configuration for molecules just as we write it for the atoms okay so how we will write you see this molecular orbitals now they are just uh, named like this say uh, whichever orbital say this one say it is formed from these two molecular orbitals are formed from 2s atomic orbitals okay and we know that s orbitals they only undergo head on overlap okay so that's why s orbitals they form only sigma bonds okay so we'll just write this one as sigma 2s and this one is sigma star 2s okay since these are formed from 2s the bonding one is represented by sigma and the anti bonding one is represented by sigma star okay similarly in this one you see these two degenerate orbitals this will form the pi bonds okay so this one we write as pi 2px and pi 2pi and since this is a both uh, means these are both equal of energy means degenerate so that's why a equal sign is given then uh, this one the 2pz orbital is uh, means uh, the 2pz orbital also forms your sigma bond okay because the uh, z axis here is your intermolecular axis so that's why we will write it as sigma 2pz okay then this one anti bonding uh, degenerate orbitals uh, 2px and y we write pi star 2px equals to pi star 2py and the bond, uh, anti bonding uh, 2pz orbital is written as sigma star 2pz okay see for each uh, whatever you will write in this one the uh, bonding the same you will get in the anti bonding also just you have to uh, give a, a star sign okay in this one the arrangement is little bit different everything is same only these two orbitals interchange okay uh, in this one we had pi to px equals to pi to py in less and ener lower energy compared to sigma to pz and in this one you see the sigma to pz is having low energy uh, compared to your pi to px and pi to py okay so we'll just uh, write this uh, orbitals means uh, the molecular orbitals in order of energy say first we'll, uh, sigma uh, i have not written the 1s orbital is just same as 2s okay so you just write sigma 1s sigma 2s uh, sorry sigma 1s sigma star 1s and then sigma 2s sigma star 2s and then just uh, keep writing in this order of energy okay and you see uh, each orbital uh, has some amount of electrons say for example sigma 2s has two electrons sigma star 2s has two electrons then pi to px pi to py they have two two electrons okay so uh, the number of electrons that are present in that particular orbital is written to the power okay so you see this just in the power we just write the total num uh, number of electrons that are present in that particular orbital for oxygen you see it is like the same sigma 1s2 sigma star 1s2 sigma 2s2 sigma star 2s2 like this in this one you see in pi to px and pi I uh, mean sorry pi star to px and pi star to py we have one one electron each so we'll write it like this pi star to px one pi star to py one okay so this is the molecular electronic configuration okay that we can write for this uh, n2 and o2 molecules okay <clears throat> now say uh, what else we can find it from this uh, uh, molecular orbit diagram first important thing is that we can find out the bond order okay so bond order means uh, in a molecule what type of bond is formed say for example single bond or double bond or triple bond like that so for finding bond order we have a formula bond order is equals to number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals minus number of electrons in anti bonding molecular orbitals okay divided by 2 clear <clears throat> now see in this one what we will do you can consider all the bonding molecular orbitals say sigma 1s you can consider then sigma 2s you can consider pi 2px equals to pi 2py this also you can consider and sigma 2pz also you can consider okay and in the anti bonding you can consider this star uh, signed orbitals okay or what you can do you can only consider the 2p uh, this one 
two p orbitals. Okay, here I have just considered the two p orbitals. Every if you consider two p, if you consider two s two p, or if you consider all uh, this one, one s two s two p, it will give you the same result. Okay, so for uh, saving time, I just considered this last orbital that is filled. Okay, and the two p orbital. Because you see in this one, two s orbital, you have two electrons in bonding and two electrons in anti bonding, so it will just simply cancel out. Okay. So in this one, I have considered only the two p orbitals. You see, in this two p orbitals, in the bonding, we had six electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And in the anti bonding, we don't have any electrons. So what we do? We'll just uh, write here six minus zero divided by two, and we get three. Okay. Bond with the three, it means that nitrogen molecule means N two molecule has a triple bond present between two nitrogen atoms. Okay. So similarly, let us uh, find it for oxygen. Oxygen has six electrons in the bonding molecular orbital, and it has two electrons in the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So uh, this one, this uh, we'll write here six minus of two divided by two, and we'll get two. That means in oxygen molecule we have a double bond present. Okay. Next important property that we can find out from this molecular orbital diagram is your magnetic properties. Okay. Now. Uh, we know that there are two types of magnetic properties that are used in, uh, uh, say, any uh, compounds or molecules. Okay, so first one is your diamagnetic, and second one is your paramagnetic. Diamagnetic are those substances which are not affected by any magnetic field, and paramagnetic are those substances which are affected by magnetic field. Okay, now how you'll find out? You just see, you just check for unpaired electrons. Okay, in this molecular orbitals, if any unpaired electron is present in any orbital, then the compound is uh, or the molecule is said to be paramagnetic just for example you see in oxygen we have unpaired electrons that is present okay you see these electrons are unpaired so since unpaired electrons are present that's why the oxygen molecule is paramagnetic in nature okay but in nitrogen we uh, don't have any unpaired electrons you see all the electrons are paired means two two electrons are present each so it is diamagnetic in nature okay now uh, this is the conventional method that we used to use in a uh, class 11 and 12 no? say uh, this one you have to draw it in the exams uh, and like that you will get marks but you see in entrance exams now you will not get that much time to solve all this means to draw all these diagrams and to solve questions because for each question you are getting only one minute okay so what we have to do we can uh, use a shortcut okay i'll just uh, teach you a shortcut using which you can solve uh, this uh, any questions from mot and you can find all these properties and all everything bond order magnetic property everything in just uh, uh, say 30 to 40 seconds okay so let's uh, move on to that one you see uh, this is the trick uh, that uh, I've been using means uh, I also used this one when I was a student uh, so uh, using this trick what we can do we can find all the properties and all everything okay in just uh, less than a minute so what we'll do we'll just write numbers from 8 to 20 like this okay and say these numbers are the number of electrons means total number of electrons that are present in a molecule okay uh, say 8, 9, 10 is just right like this and you see we remember just uh, now we solved the for molecular orbital diagram for nitrogen in that one we got nitrogen uh, we know that its uh, total number of electrons is 14 because each nitrogen is having 7 electrons so total electrons is 14 okay and for nitrogen we got the bond order is 3 okay so we'll just write uh, total electrons uh, means nitrogen is 14 and just uh, below 14 we'll write 3 okay now see what we will do, if you write like this, just from 3 both sides, you decrease it by 0 0.5, okay, see from 3, uh, the previous one and the next one will be uh, 2.5, 2.5 and then, then 2 and 2, then 1.5, 1.5, just like that, you just keep on decreasing by 0 0.5, okay, now, uh, if we just write this one and we de keep on decreasing by 0 0.5, we will get the bond order for all the molecules having a total number of electrons from 8 to 20 say for oxygen we have 16 no? uh, bond order is 2 okay that's one say you take uh, any other example say carbon carbon is how much carbon is 12 and c2 c2 is 12 if you draw a molecular orbital diagram you will get bond order is 2 okay now see uh, this though uh, we can easily find out the bond order just using the uh, writing these numbers okay now what about magnetic properties you see this total number of electrons 
say you have total number of electrons we have written here now now if the total number of electrons is odd okay say you have 9 11 13 15 17 19 so these are odd numbers okay so when total number of electrons are odd we will get paramagnetic property okay and if total number of electrons are even say for example 14 12 means nitrogen carbon will get uh, diamondry property okay one exception is present here you see this 10 and 16 okay 16 we are finer for oxygen and we are getting it as paramagnetic okay so this exception is that for 10 and 15, uh, 16 you see these are even numbers okay these are even numbers but still their uh, magnetic property is paramagnetic means they are uh, even but paramagnetic in nature so this exception you have to uh, remember because this is very important you just uh, uh, you can make a mistake if you just don't know this thing okay because oxygen and uh, atomic number total number of molecules 10 and 16 these compounds they are having total number of electrons as even but uh, this thing but they are paramagnetic in nature okay so till this one you see you can easily find out the bond order and magnetic pro property without even drawing the molecular orbital diagram okay now see you might ask a question that uh, what if we have a total number of electrons uh, less than 8 or greater than 20 okay so for that also you have a trick if you have total number of electrons less than 8 what we will do for less than 8 it is just like this one okay say we have 4 orbitals and it starts from bonding anti-bonding bonding anti-bonding anti okay so just remember this word okay if you remember this word then you can easily do it okay see we have total number of electrons as 7 okay so if you have 7 electrons what we will do we will just start filling up from the low energy orbital say it is like this say we will start filling up say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 each orbital can have only 2 electrons maximum okay so we will give 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay now this is the molecular orbital diagram that is present for all the uh, molecules which has total number of electrons less than 8 okay so bond order we find same formula bonding electrons minus of antibonding by 2 so here bonding electrons is 4 and antibonding is 3 okay so 4 minus 3 by 2 it is 0 0.5 okay and since we have unpaired electrons present so it is paramagnetic in nature so in this way you can uh, using this one you can find out for total number of electrons less than 8 and for total number of electrons greater than 8 what you can do you can draw resonating structures okay uh, sorry uh, not greater than 8 greater than 20 so for total number of electrons greater than 20 what you can do we can find out bond order and all from resonance okay so how we will do it you see just uh, let us take the example of co3 2 minus uh, molecule so for co3 2 minus we have this uh, structure okay we have uh, double bonded oxygen and two single bonded oxygen and minus charge is there okay so this thing uh, first you see this minus charge can come inside and this double bond can open up so we will get this structure in the next structure you see this minus charge can come inside and the double bond can open up and we'll get this structure so we'll get three resonating structures for co3 2 minus molecule okay so uh, what we'll do we'll just keep one position fixed okay so we're taking this co bond as fixed and we'll write bond order so here what formula you're using you just see in this three structures that you just see the change in the bond present between the carbon and oxygen okay in this one it is a double bond in this one it is a single bond in this one it is a single bond okay so for double bond we will write 2 for single bond we will write 1 and for single bond again we will write 1 okay and we are considering 3 resonating structures so we will write 3 means total number of resonating structures will divide it by that okay so after solving this we will get a bond order of 4 by 3 so for molecules uh, having electrons more than 20 you will get bond order of uh, you can calculate bond order from resonance okay and uh, magnetic properties we cannot find for these molecules because these molecules are having more than two atoms when they are triatomic or polyatomic molecules so for finding their magnetic property we have to use different spectroscopic techniques okay and that is very complicated so questions uh, for magnetic properties for these molecules will not come in your exam you just uh, means uh, you just use this trick you can solve any questions from that will be coming in your exam from this uh, molecular orbital uh, theories okay so i think with this uh, will be over thank you if you have any doubts you can just uh, mail me or just uh, text me i'll just uh, reply to you thank you